What's up, YouTube? It's Christopher. We are going to go on a journey today. Oh, my goodness. So, as you can see in the title, uh, I bought the cheapest fan fret guitar I could find on Amazon. And it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's a, it's an actually a, a pretty good-looking guitar. Uh, it's this guy right here. So, it's not horrible looking, right? It's actually pretty cool. And from this distance to the screen, it looks like it's pretty damn sweet. And for the most part, and for what I paid for it, which was uh, $281 off of Amazon, I got what I paid for. Let's just say that. So it's called Starshine is the guitar and there's so much wrong with this thing that it's kind of comical it, it really is it's really funny uh there was another youtuber uh arnold plays guitar uh shout out to him he does amazing videos uh i absolutely i, I love his videos i subscribe he's a great dude uh his reviews are always spot on and he reviewed the eight string version of this which i found after of course i bought this one um, I probably should have done some research before clicking buy, but I didn't. <clears throat> so I have what I have now. Um, it's not horrible to the point where it's an unusable guitar, uh, because I can do setups and I can fix guitars and I can do all, uh, some minor luthier work. Uh, I can make this into a very, very good playing instrument. Right now it plays just fine, sort of. But it's got so many things wrong with it. <clears throat> First of all, let's look at this jack and how off-center it is. That made me laugh as soon as I saw it. Like, that's pretty amazing, like, to miss the center of the body by that much. I think that's pretty funny. Um, the bridge is amazing, just like Arnold says in his video. Can I ask... If somebody can tell me what this thing is on the 12th fret, because I have no idea what that inlay is supposed to be. I feel like I'm being trolled by whoever built this guitar. Um, the frets are super rough. Maybe you can still hear it. I've tried to rub them a bit. But they're very gritty. They need to be polished for sure. The edges of the frets are laughably bad. There's nothing sharp, but you can see that they just like kind of ran a file over the edge. It's, it's pretty obnoxious. The space between the neck and the guitar, it's tough to get an angle here, but this space right here is, is a good size gap. There's a gap under the neck right here same thing on the other side I feel like a dummy doing this this corner of the headstock is straight up epoxy like the wood wasn't there so they just put epoxy on there and sanded it into a corner I think that's hilarious these are locking tuners but yet they wound the string on there which makes me feel like it's probably not doing a good job of locking anything <laughs> Uh, the neck is made out of mahogany and rosewood, according to uh, Amazon. They sanded down some epoxy spots in here. This corner is so rough that you can hear it. Here's the smooth. You can see how bad the, the, the holes are for the grommets for the neck so sloppy this right here has a lot to do with it um three-piece body it's ash you got to take that little cover off to change the strings i haven't opened that yet that ought to be hilarious um the guitar is just a super mess the nut is just flat sanded to the edge of the board to the point where the ends of it are sharp so up here, that thing's sharp. I can cut myself on this. 
Same thing right here, where my finger is definitely hitting. So there's a lot of stuff that I got to do to this. The frets are terrible. I got to fix the frets. They seem level, but the action's pretty high. So when the action's high, you can kind of, if you, if you raise the action, you can mask uh, high frets to a degree. Um, so I'm going to lower, I'm going to fix the nut. I'm going to re-slot the nut so that they're actually at a depth that they're supposed to be because the string is a mile and a half off the fretboard. So get that down to where it needs to be. This is sanded through right here where there's an epoxy divot. So right there they filled a, a dent with epoxy and then just sanded over it and didn't finish over the sanding they did. So Arnold's review was spot on. This thing is a uh, dumpster fire. Uh, for somebody who doesn't know how to fix these sorts of things. Uh, I do, so I'm going to fix them. And this is actually not a bad body. It's got a really good weight to it. It's very solid. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but these pickups sound okay. I have a set of DiMarzios that I'm going to put into this. But I just wanted you guys to hear it very quickly. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys real quick what this guitar sounds like out of the box. So... It was interesting to tune it. When I tuned the G string, it literally went ding and then started to tune, which was kind of hilarious. But these pickups are garbage. I'm going to change them. But they don't sound super bad. Alright, they sound super bad. It's a knack. That's the middle. Here's the neck. Did I say neck a minute ago? I think I did. It was on the bridge, then I did the middle, now I'm doing the neck. <laughs> Unlike Arnold in his video, I don't have any sharp frets, so it's not carving up my hand. Uh, they are sanded flat, so they're not exactly rounded off. I'm going to fix that a little bit. Um, so my hand is not getting chewed up. The only thing that's happening to my hand is my fingers are getting dirty because this fretboard's gross. Um, so I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to fix some spots on it, uh, fix the action. I'm going to change the pickups out. And you're going to see it all in this video. I'm already at eight and a half minutes long, and I apologize if I'm yapping. So I'm going to stop it here, and I'm going to continue on with another video, or same video. I'm just going to edit it in. This is going to be the first one I actually edit. You guys can see how horrible I am at that. And I'm going to fix some of these issues and make this a very playable guitar. And I'm going to do that right now. So I'll see you guys again in a second once I have this fixed. Be right back. Boom magic of the internet. I fixed it. The guitar is way, way better than it was when I opened it up. It's been several days, I should say. Uh, I've done several things to this guitar to improve upon it. Um, it's now a pretty awesome guitar, I have to say. I have to give myself a, a pat on, on my neck roll in the back or something. Um, things I did. I swapped out the pickups. I took those atrocious, whatever they were, threw them away. I have a DiMarzio Tone Zone in the bridge and a DiMarzio uh, Air Norton in the neck. These pickups came out of an Ibanez guitar that I put Fishman pickups in. Uh, so I had these lying around, which is pretty cool. 
didn't touch the bridge except for raising the action and adjusting the intonation. Um, what else did I do? A full fret job, <laughs> uh, not in replacing frets, but um, I basically leveled them, I rounded them off, um, polished them, so the frets are all beautiful now. Uh, the fretboard was extremely thirsty, so I oiled it up, cleaned it first, oiled it up. Um, what else did I do? I basically reshaped and re-slotted this nut. Uh, it used to be horribly high and extremely sharp. Now it's wonderful. Um, I replaced the locking tuners that I had in there. Those things were the worst tuners I've ever seen. Um, typically, when you operate a locking tuner, you turn uh, the wheel in the back, and as you tighten it, it pushes a pin up. So you've got a hole in the tuner, the string goes in, and inside that hole there's a pin that comes up like this. And when the string is in, the pin comes up and pinches against the string. And as you tighten it, it pinches it against the top of the tuner. That's how a locking tuner works. However, on a normal locking tuner, that pin is separate from the turning mechanism. So basically the turning mechanism is pushing the bottom of a, a free-floating pin that's inside that chamber up against the string. The tuners that were on here, the pin was attached to the wheel in the back. So as you turn it against the string, it's turning against your string. So it's actually bending the crap out of your string inside the hole. Horrible, horrible tuners. They, they will break strings like instantly almost, if, especially if you overturn them. I'll just squish and turn the, the string into a deformed mess, uh, which I did see happen on the, the strings that were in there. Um, so those are gone. I put in some hip shot locking tuners. I used the ump system in the back so I didn't have to redrill any holes or anything like that. Uh, biggest improvement on this guitar. Uh, those tuners are miracle workers for sustain and tunability, obviously. Uh, but other than that, I did some edge work as far as you know, rounding it off, rounding off the edge of this fretboard a little bit with some steel wool. Um, cleaned it up, tightened the neck joint, so now there's no gap under there. I was very surprised that the neck moved significantly once I tightened this guy up. And now it's a really great playing guitar. And it's pretty cool looking in my opinion. Uh, for the money I paid, which is 281 bucks, plus the tuners, which I paid uh, $54 on Reverb. Um, the pickups I had, so technically I didn't pay extra for them, but if I did, they would be about 80 bucks a piece. So even if I purchased all these components, we're talking 240 bucks on top of 280 bucks, which would make this, you know, uh, $520 guitar, I guess. And would it be worth $520? Absolutely. This guitar plays really good now. Uh, it actually sounds incredible. I'm going to use this guitar a lot. I have no, no, um, Holy crap, am I brain farting right now? I don't want to get rid of this guitar ever because it has zero resale value. Who's going to buy this? Um, I did. <laughs> so I guess there are some, some crazy people out there like myself that would purchase something like this. But I really enjoy, for anybody that's going to ask, why would you buy a guitar like that when you know it's a dog? Well, I really enjoy getting something that's a turd and trying to polish it and in this case, I, I was able to successfully polish a turd, um, in my opinion. So the, the neck feels way smoother now. Um, it just plays like kind of like a dream now. Um, can't really explain that, but I'll let you hear it. These pickups are incredible. <laughs> Thank you. 
pick up. <laughs> thing flies now so my reason for purchasing this guitar is i've written several songs in my career i don't have a career but I, i've written several songs that i've utilized this really crazy tuning i'm going to show you what it is it's something that i kind of came up with um on accident and just kind of used it and wrote a song in it and have been using it ever since i have a song called surreal um if you feel like listening to it, go check out Colgrin on SoundCloud, K-O-L-D-G-R-I-N, and you can find a 10-song album that I had made. And there's several songs on there that use this tuning, and I'm going to show you what it is. So right now, I'm in D tuning, so D standard, I think. Let me double check that. I'm pretty sure. Gonna open up my. I'm using the Pliny app uh, plugin. Sorry, I'm gonna check out the tuning real quick. Yeah, so I'm in D. So the tuning that I have is really strange. It's drop. So it's drop C. Now here's a weird where it's getting kind of strange. The G string. So right now we have C, G, C. Now we're gonna go G, G, D, which is weird. That's a tuning. C, G, C, G, G, D. It's very strange. You got two strings that are exactly the same, which is cool because you can do things that you couldn't do on a regular string easily uh, by getting like side by side notes like this to create some dissonance. Um, but I have many songs that I've written in this tuning, so I've needed a guitar that I can keep in this tuning, and this is going to be that guitar. Uh, and this one's perfect because it's got the fan fret. So having that low C tuning really works with this multi-scale setup. Uh, the only thing that I might do different is that first G string on the actual G string um, is perfect tension. But the one underneath it, it's a little too sloppy. So I might get another G string and put it in that B string position uh, just to give the tension a little bit better. But what it does kind of do is it creates, um, the note sounds slightly different because of the difference in tension. So it's kind of a neat thing when you hear both notes at the same time. So if, if you listen to any of the Colgrim music that I have, there's a song on there called Surreal that I do in this tuning. So 
there's that tune. I also have a song called uh, Nemesis that's on there that's in this tuning. <laughs> That's the cool tuning that I have. You can make really different sounding chords with regular shapes that you already know. Um, so for instance, you have this shape that I call the Hendrix chord. I don't even know what it is. My, my theory is junk. So basically if you have your open E, seventh fret on your A string, sixth fret on your D string, seventh fret again on your G string, and then eighth fret on your B string, you get that Hendrix-y going to go bam, bam. So if you take that chord minus the pinky note, you get this really cool sounding. And you can find all these different chords that are just cool sounding chords It's a really fun tuning. Uh, that's why I bought this guitar. I wanted something cheap that I could put that tuning on, throw some good pickups in it, and have it sound great for recording, uh, which this does. Um, and I think this is a keeper for me. Um, check them out or don't. Uh, if you know how to do some work on a guitar, check them out. If you're not the type of person that wants a guitar that you have to work on and make some changes to in order for it to be a really good guitar, skip it entirely because it will piss you off. There's a lot of stuff on here that uh, as far as fit and finish and some quality finishing goes, it misses the mark by a mile. I'm not the type of person that gets all uptight about you know, finishing flaws or things like that. If I paid thousands of dollars for something, yes, those finishing flaws better not be there. Even if it's, you know, a $700, $600, $500 guitar, they shouldn't be there. But when you're talking about a Chinese import guitar that they just kind of went <laughs> put together and made and sold very cheaply, uh, for them to sell it at 281 bucks, they made this thing real cheap because they are only going to sell it if they can make a profit. So they made this very cheap. They cut a lot of corners. But with those corners that they cut, do they matter when it comes down to playing the guitar? Some of them, yes, as far as the fret work went and how the neck was not attached to the guitar properly, I had to tighten it a lot. I probably turned the screw a full two times in the back here to pull that neck down to where it was supposed to be. 
um, things like that. If you're not in the know of exactly how a guitar goes together, um, this is not the guitar for you. If you're somebody who's a real tinkerer and wants to, you know, put some time and some effort into a guitar because it's something you enjoy doing, I enjoy doing it because it helps me uh, get better at that craft, right? So I fix guitars for people um, on the side, you know, so I have friends and some people I don't even know that give me their guitars to fix certain problems and I fix them. Well, if you're out of practice, you're going to have a hard time fixing things. So I personally like to buy dogs and work on them and make them better. And it, it improves my ability to do that. So that's why I bought this guitar, because I like to practice that sort of thing. And now I've fixed it all up and this thing rips. I would definitely keep this for a long, long time. And I think that's a really nice looking guitar. It's, I think they were ripping off an Ormsby maybe, or maybe even a Myonis uh, body shape with this little cutoff they have up here. Um, I'm not really certain which one it was, but they, they ripped off some other company. You know, there's basically it's a total copy of that guitar. Uh, it has great contours on the back, you know, like a Myonis wood. Obviously, this is not as detailed and high level quality controlled as a Myonis would be. Um, but then again, it costs 281 bucks, so why should it? But now it plays great. I love it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it's a cool little guitar, man, that I'll keep in my collection for quite some time. Uh, I may <laughs> get rid of that logo up there because I think it's stupid. I wish I could get rid of that thing. I have no idea what that is. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a comet or something. I, I have no idea. But I like this. And I know I didn't do any up close stuff, but I totally rounded out the frets on this guy, which maybe you can and maybe you can't tell. But I polished the frets all up. That fretboard's much darker now that it's been oiled. And uh, overall, I really enjoy this guitar. I've played it a lot since I fixed it, like a lot. There's the uh, ump set up in the back. For those of you who don't know what that is, there are these little brackets that go underneath the tuners that keep them from turning, which is what the screw in the back does. Uh, but instead of putting a screw in it, you just put these ump brackets underneath it and uh, you don't have to re-drill. You don't have to put any new holes in the neck. So there you go. That's this Starshine, whatever model this is, I have no idea. But uh, it's solid. It sounds amazing and it plays incredibly now. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I know I enjoyed making it, I enjoyed fixing this guitar, and I'm going to continue to enjoy playing this guy for quite some time. So, YouTube, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.